Sawai. So, these are just some of my thoughts on the recent firing by Google of James Damore, an employee who released a memo criticizing elements of Google's diversity policy. Now, there really isn't anything unexpected about Google doing this. I mean, if they didn't, they'd be endlessly accosted by progressive activists, and they'd be in the awkward position as a pretty progressive corporation having to defend someone openly critical of their progressive policies. But what I think warrants attention, and what I think we ought to keep an eye on, is the pattern that seems to emerge whenever this happens, whenever an individual is targeted by the progressives, and it ends up backfiring. And there are numerous examples of this in recent years. Milo Yiannopoulos was and is a simple provocateur, and it seems that every time he appeared on talk shows and more famously college campuses, the progressives took the bait and freaked out over his mere presence. And now he is far more well-known than he has any right to be and has a best-selling book. Jordan Peterson was a little-known professor in Canada who, because he spoke out against being forced to use transgender pronouns, he's become a major influence on the anti-progressive movement, and his lectures are seen by hundreds of thousands of people. Perhaps the biggest example is Donald Trump, who, because the media and his opponents kept taking the bait and attacking him and his supporters, well, look at him now. And I think what these three people have in common is that they were the targets of the left who thought that they would back down and play by the rules, and when they didn't, they had no other option but to flip out and give these people far more attention than they would have had they just been ignored. The progressives are the ones making these people famous. And this reminds me of, in Plato's Apology to Socrates, when Socrates calls himself the gadfly of the Athenian people, the gadfly of the state. In the analogy, Socrates likens the Athenian state to a horse and himself to a gadfly who, by his constant buzzing and prodding, aims to stir the state into action. And I think with our modern gadflies, their effect has been to force the progressive beast to do what it wasn't meant to, respond to a critic who won't back down. Whereas the progressives are used to critics apologizing almost immediately and falling back in line, I don't think the progressives know how to deal with gadflies. I mean, I mean, it seems pretty evident that they don't, considering how poorly they handle them. The smart thing to do is just to ignore them, but what the progressives seem to do every time is that they take the bait and flip out, wasting their time, energy, social clout, and often their money hunting down and trying to silence these normally small critics. And I think in our modern case, the progressives are kicking a hornet's nest whenever they do this because they end up getting thousands of people to rally around these critics who they see as martyrs. But the problem is this, as useful as gadflies are at provoking progressives into wasting their resources, it won't amount to much if people aren't shown a viable alternative. We all know universities are run by progressives, but the problem is that right now, as bad as they are, they control access to higher education and employment. And until alternative universities not run by progressives are made more visible and viable, parents will still enroll their kids into progressive institutions. And the same goes for Google, YouTube, Twitter, and the rest of social media. So I guess what I would propose is that whenever these progressive institutions hemorrhage their own, there needs to be alternatives where they can immediately be placed so they can use their skills and become an actual threat to the progressives. So those are my thoughts. Tell me what you think, and if James Damore is watching this, I wish you luck and you'd be welcome on my channel anytime. Diabana. Doch sie hielten an und küssten sich, sonst wären wir heute. 